today i want to show you just a couple of little tricks that you can use to get a foothold into your color theory and that's using the paints that you've already bought so regardless of the paint palettes that you've bought it's in your best interest to actually learn about the colors that you have bought and you'll notice that every set that you buy has a few similar paint names and some completely different and that all depends on the maker that you've chosen to go with so not going to lie but i have tons and tons of um palettes i have palettes for going particular places to do particular things outside i've also got a studio palette full of my own homemade paints the list is endless when it comes to uh, professionals we always have more than we need but as a beginner it's really important that you understand the colors that you've got so one way of doing this is to actually make color swatches from all the paints that you actually own so you can see here i've got quite a few and that will tell you what the actual paint itself looks like when it's dry. Very handy. But in addition to that, something that you can do, which is very time consuming, but very worthwhile, is to create a grid, which you'll see I've done here. So on this grid, I'm going to put all the colours that I have in just one of my palettes. And I'm going to repeat the names down here. So again, depending on the maker that you've gone with, a lot of these sets actually come already parceled like these. Um, they all do have their name on. Um, this came out of another packet, which is the Dali Rowney. And you'll see here on the side, they usually have their names also printed on them. These white knights have a number printed on the side, which corresponds to the wrapper there. And you'll find the name on the outside. So again, all of these will have their name and a number on them. Now, they're the things you want to take note of. Now, if you've been given a palette, one of these, these actually come out. You can see mine's very old really rusty um, but these do come out and it makes it easier to get these out these just move with the clips and you can get all these out to find out what is written on the side of the little pans these are half pans so now that i've written all my names i've actually only written half of them because i needed an extra page for the extras and I'll obviously need an extra two pages added at the bottom. Uh, hopefully you won't need quite as many. Okay, so depending on how you would read a grid, it's very important how you read a grid, whether you read across or you read down and across. I'm going to read across the top and down each one. So starting with, in this case, Windsor Yellow. I'm going to mix the Windsor Yellow and of course it's mixed with Windsor Yellow there because I've repeated what was there. Aurelian is my next one which is also a yellow. Now you'll have different paint names to me. I'm just using my Windsor palette. It's mixed with Windsor Yellow so it's Aurelian. Please make sure you use a clean white ceramic to mix these in so i've started with aurelian aurelian's the main color and then we add windsor yellow to it now it's important you get the order right if you're reading across the top what goes down first in your palette is what's at the top so i've now mixed the two so it's in this case aurelian and windsor yellow Okay. Indian yellow is my next one. So I'm going to take Indian yellow. 
and obviously we don't need a lot of this and I'm going to go back to Windsor Yellow and add some Windsor Yellow in. Fill the box in. Raw Sienna in this case. So we'll start with the Raw Sienna. Now you will find some colours a little bit weaker than the other. And I'm adding, I'm going to add a little bit extra of the raw sienna because it's quite weak. Raw sienna and Windsor yellow. Yellow ochre. I like to keep all my yellows together regardless of what kind of yellow they are. It's entirely up to you how you arrange your palettes okay so I'm going to continue along the line so every one of these colors will be mixed with the Windsor yellow but I obviously put this one down first So you may think there's nothing to the order in which paints go together, but that's actually untrue. So you can see on my second line, I'm now going to be working across again, reading what's above and mixing with the colour below. So you may assume that this colour would be the same as this colour. However, one yellow is stronger than another. So I've started here with the Aurelian. And because it's Windsor Yellow, I'm just going to add a little bit of the Windsor Yellow because that's the quantity. You're going to add less. So remember, this is Aurelian and Windsor Yellow. So this is actually just a fraction stronger than this one before. Now, obviously, pure Aurelian goes in the next box. And we carry on along the line. So again, Indian yellow mixed with a little bit of Aurelian. Now you've got to remember that when you're going across these, what is happening to the main paint that's being used? So for the first line, it was Windsor yellow. That particular pan has become wetter and wetter and wetter so you're getting more and more pigment off of it so you've got to be careful about how much you're actually adding or you will start swamping the other color hence the reason we work in a particular order so every one of these colors is going to be mixed with aurelian so we're going to go raw sienna this time so that's raw sienna remember i said that was a really weak color and a dab of Aurelian. So you'll see with some of the lighter colours, they're very close, but not entirely identical, especially when they dry. So this one is yellow ochre. And you can see where it's now got wet more. I'm getting more pigment off of the pan. And this is now the Aurelian. So there's a colour change there.
So you want to continue filling every single box in. But remember which order you're reading them in. If you read a chart across the top and then down, you start with that colour and then you add the colour down the side into it. Now remember there is a quantity difference. You want your first colour to be quite strong with only a touch of the second colour. That way you can get to see where the differences actually lie, particularly with yellows. Yellows tend to be quite strong and they can push away other pigments. So you'll start to see as you come through here, the yellows actually becoming stronger. They will start to push other colours apart. It's a very, very useful exercise. You can start to see where you get skin tones, where you get building tones where you get most of your landscape colours but until you've actually mixed two colours together it's very hard to understand how you get all of those mixes to create a lot of your paintings. This is one such colour that you'd assume to be much stronger and have much more coverage than a yellow. You'd assume the yellow wouldn't be as powerful. Well, watch this. This is the Indian yellow, and this is just a tiny bit of Indian yellow. And yet there goes the purple. There's none of it left. So that goes to show you just how powerful yellows actually are. And by learning how these colours interact will give you a better idea of your colour theory. And the reason I say that is because they are not just green, yellow, blue, violet like you would have on a color wheel they actually relate to two particular colors that have in some cases in many cases either a single pigment or two and three pigments mixed together to create that particular color you can see that i've i've made some progress with this but this li literally is a labor of love doing these charts however You've got to remember that we're still only using this one palette and I've still got all of this to fill in. It takes quite a long time, so you've got to be really quite committed to it, uh, but it does show you what happens with some of your paints. You can see some lovely colours coming in through here. These are mixed with blacks, so you've got some lovely colours there, but interestingly, some colours separate so you will find those happening which you probably wouldn't have realised as a beginner that one paint pigment would push another away but that's exactly what you will find when you start to do these charts so this is why this is invaluable as for a beginner so i've just gone in a little bit closer so you can see how some of my colours react with each other. You can see here, this is just Potter's Pink, reacting with some of the blues and the greens and they're pushing away each other. So that's a really good interaction. This middle line here, I should point out, is the pure colour. Um, this is where the two meet that are identical. So you will have differences between this side and this side because of the order that the paint's been mixed in but it's a really interesting exercise to find out what will happen with different makers as well um, but if it's your first palette try this exercise you should still be doing little swatch cards of the actual color so that you know how they dry because each one of them will dry differently um, but you need the names of them actually on the paints and that would stay with your palette. But it's it's interesting to see how they dry with another colour in them. Now remember, this is only two-way mix. Doing a three-way mix is a little bit harder to do as a chart. Um, it requires lots and lots of paper. But again, it is an exercise definitely worth attempting.
I just want to show you a close up. This tends to be my favourite section and this is with the darker colours. So although these are all mixed with yellows and pinks, you tend to find that you can see the start of your skin tones appearing in this section. Um, the other one you would have seen flowers maybe, so your botanical paintings, also landscapes, skies. You'll start to see them clump together within these charts. So again, it's another reason for spending the grueling amount of time that you need to, to actually produce one of these. And remember, I was only using one palette. I have hundreds of paints. Um, so I have hundreds of these that I would do just to find out what the interaction between different makers of paints are. Certainly worth thinking about changing up your paints when you run out to the paints that you love looking at love working with each of them like i said has a different purpose they haven't been made for no reason so please 